Chapter 7 Positional Equity Positional equity is one of my favorite topics to talk about when it comes to leadership within law enforcement, or any business for that matter. So, what is positional equity? This term has so many different meanings, but within the law enforcement community, it is generally the same definition. When I was a sergeant and I was running the community policing unit, I had a commander that required me to notify him whenever a major community event was occurring at which public figures would be in attendance. You may say to yourself, this sounds logical because he wants to ensure that the community event is properly represented by the department, and you would be correct if it wasn't that this commander was the king of positional equity. This commander only wanted to be at these events for the photos to further his career and secure an upcoming promotion. People that subscribe to positional equity are extremely easy to spot. Look at their history and see how many future leaders they developed without any self-interest. Too many times you will see commanders within the law enforcement agency attach themselves to one person and only help that one person advance their career all with the hidden agenda to further their own career. Typically, a positional equity commander will latch onto what we refer to in the law enforcement profession as a golden child. This is an officer or sergeant who can do no wrong and typically gets away with everything. Positional equity commanders latch onto them because, on the surface, they look squared away and will do anything that any commander asks them to do, whether it is right or wrong, and whether it affects morale. We also call these types of people in the law enforcement community company men, and there sure are a lot of them in the law enforcement community today. When a positional equity commander latches on to one of these types of officers, it is a recipe for disaster. Positional equity commanders will go to great lengths to protect and hide major deficiencies in performance in these types of officers or sergeants. In my old agency, when sergeant promotions came up, this was the time that positional equity commanders shined. Typically, during promotion time, commanders would meet behind closed doors and begin horse trading to move sergeants around. If you were a golden child and had a positional equity commander on your side, the likelihood of you landing a specialized unit without becoming a patrol sergeant first was extremely high and happened often. I watched countless times officers got promoted to sergeant and be placed in specialized units that either had no business being in or incompetent at best. Having a positional equity commander on your side practically ensures that you will make it off your probation. This practice was rampant in my old agency and caused major morale issues and in some cases caused animosity amongst the rank and file. In any agency, the chief of police should be the one to make the determination where people go when they get promoted and be able to spot positional equity commanders easily. Too many chiefs leave promotional movement to unqualified commanders and let the chips fall where they may. Being a servant to a positional equity commander comes with a price. It is kind of like the movie The Godfather. I do a favor for you and in the future I'm going to call on you to do a favor for me. This happens so many times within law enforcement agencies, and this is how cliques are created. This is one of the most frustrating things within our profession because it becomes high school all over again. You do not know who to trust. You do not know whose allegiance they belong to. And more importantly, you do not know which side you belong to. The way to stop this type of behavior and truly make our profession respectable is eradicating all positional equity commanders. How do we do this? I am a firm believer in performance-based promotions and assignments. How many of you within your agencies have a policy where your subordinates or fellow officers have an input into your promotion or assignment to a specialized unit? I can almost guarantee you that none of you have that. Why is that? Giving the power to make that type of decision to the rank and file scares positional equity leaders and some chiefs of police. If you are barely performing as a patrol officer, why should you be allowed to adorn sergeant stripes and lead other people? 
If you are a sergeant and everyone in your squad is not performing or reach you below standards, why would you be allowed to run a specialized unit? One of the best ways for us to change the culture within law enforcement and improve morale is to address positional equity leaders and promotions. This issue is plaguing our profession and affecting mental health for our rank and file. Not because they are not getting promoted, but because the system to get promoted is rigged and inconsistent. If you are someone that believes that promotions are based on the best qualified person, you are naive and need to fully understand what you are up against. This is not to discourage you from putting in for promotional opportunities, but an educational tool of the politics that happen after the process is taken. We can change this type of behavior within our profession, but it must start at the top.